Are you a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher of the word? Are you a prophet or prophetess, an apostle? Welcome to the Vine Press class, a place where vines turn into wine. Emmanuel Christo, in conjunction with the Vine Press Ministries, introduced to the Vine Press class. Here you will learn and be acquainted with the skills that will help you grow and mature in ministry. There are barriers resulting from linguistic, mm. culture, traditions, and beliefs. This opportunity was a lifetime opportunity. We don't think that it will, it will ever happen again. What does it mean? Appointment with God needs patience. In order to become a member of this class, just follow us on our YouTube channel and subscribe with us. Then you'll follow every episode that you have missed. We believe your life will never be the same. May God bless you so much as you watch this program. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. Welcome to the Vine Press class, a place where vine stand into wine. You know, when Jesus was teaching the disciples on how to pray, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, he pointed out and said that don't lead us into temptation. What does it mean? It means that it's God himself who leads us into the testing moments simply because tests are part of our process and journey in prayer. It qualifies us for the miracles and the answers we are waiting for. Today, as we are studying in our Vine Press class, I believe your life will not remain the same because great things are going to happen in your life, but this is the first step. Overcome the temptations and God will answer your prayers and your life will never be the same again. May God bless you so much. Take me to the king. I don't have much to Welcome to the Vine Press class, a place where vines turn into wine. Um, we want to thank God so much for <clears throat> another opportunity that he has given us to be here with you uh, on this program. And I believe that your life will not remain the same. So as a continuation uh, with our study in the Lord's Prayer book, today we are going to learn about temptations. We're going to learn about temptations. So, um, when you go to page 32 of the book, of the Lord's Prayer book, you'll find this title about temptations. Um, I believe that most of us have heard about the word temptations, and as we all uh, know about uh, the word temptation, I want us to define what temptation is. Uh, Temptation is simply uh, uh, known as, according to the Oxford uh, Dictionary, uh, the desire to do something, especially something, something wrong or unwise. The desire to do something wrong or especially something wrong or unwise. So we, we desire for so many things, but when it turns to be something wrong, then the desire has turned to be a temptation. We have uh, a lot of good desires. We, have, we desire for so many things. But once a desire turns into a wrong thing, then that is a temptation. That is simply uh, what we define as a temptation. As we turn on page 32 in the Lord's Prayer book, we we are going to, uh, to learn uh, why Jesus pointed out temptations in the Lord's Prayer as he was trying to teach the disciples how to pray. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, uh, the Bible says that, and do not lead us into temptation. Do not lead us into temptation. What does this mean? As I told you in our previous episodes that prayer is a package, temptation is also part of the prayer as a process because prayer is not just mere words. It's not just kneeling down and tell God what you want to, him to do for you. 
but prayer is a package and it's a process. So in the process of prayer as a package, we learn that temptations are also part of our prayer. And temptations are also required uh, in order for our prayer to be complete and to qualify. So um, here Jesus points out temptations in the Lord is prayer. And he stated and say that, do not lead us into temptation. Do not lead us into temptation. Why? Jesus points it out because this is also one of the elements, one of the things that we have to go through in the process of our prayer for our prayer to work out well. Let's go in the book of James chapter 1 verses 13. James uh, stated in this scripture and said, when you are tempted to do wrong, do not say, God is tempting me. God cannot be tempted. He will never tempt anyone. A man is tempted to do wrong when he lets himself to be led by what his bad thoughts tell him to do. When he does what his bad thoughts tell him to do, he sins. When he sins, completes its work, it brings death. So what does it mean? When Jesus states and says that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, that do not lead us into temptation, what does it mean? What does it mean? This scripture simply means that it is God himself. It's actually like a confirmation, uh, a, re a request for God not to lead us into temptation. It, is an, it, is, it, 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 does, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are not uh, we, are, we, not, we, we don't have to face times of trials and tests. Rather, a clear edification that it is God himself who leads us into testing moments and trials. It is God himself who leads us through the moments of tests and trials. Though they may feel the same, there is a distinct difference between a trial and a temptation, discerning between moments of trials. Uh, with temptations, it is a desire to do something which is wrong. With trials, it works both. It may be a desire for either wrong or for doing something which is right, but then not in the rightful time or in the rightful moment. So uh, there, is no, there isn't so much difference between the two, uh, these two. Trials may not lead to death but temptations may lead to death. Trials may only lead to disqualification. You get disqualified by God. You don't qualify uh, for, for what God has prepared for you. you it, uh, it, uh, it is what uh, uh, measures the level of maturity for your qualification for what God has prepared for you. Once you pass the trials, then you have passed the test and you qualify for whatever God has prepared for you. But with tests, I mean with temptations, uh, it may lead to death, but also temptations come to test and measure our level of maturity. As we stated uh, at the beginning, at the very beginning, when we, uh, when, we opened, when we started this study about the Lord is prayer, we stated that prayer is we say that, that prayer is a package. Prayer is maturity as well. Uh, there are certain things that God cannot do for you before you mature in spirit. So maturity is, is qualification. It is one of the qualities that God requires for you to qualify for what you are expecting from God. So whenever trials come our way, they come to test and measure the level of our maturity. So when Jesus stated this in the Lord's Prayer, he literally meant that your prayers will also attract temptations and tests as well as trials. Whenever you come into prayer, whenever you, decide, you make a decision to pray and seek the face of God, 
then that means you are attracting trials and temptations and tests because God is not going to do that thing you're asking for because you asked for it, but because you qualify for it. So God has to train you and make you ready for what you're asking for because um, he, he doesn't just give you what you have asked for, but he is also looking for the capacity, whether you bear the, enough capacity, enough understanding, enough energy to, to, to carry what you have asked for and also to sustain it. So maturity is one of the qualities that we need in order to qualify for our prayers to be answered and for God's provision over what you prayed for. So um, when, when we go back to the scripture of James, James was saying that God does not tempt anybody and is not tempted. What does it mean? When we, when we read that scripture, most of us may think that uh, what I'm trying to teach you is a wrong doctrine because it, 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 is, it is kind of contradicting James's statement that God does not tempt. If you are not careful with these two scriptures, you may get confused. So it takes a spirit of understanding to understand the scripture of James with the scripture of Jesus. Uh, James states and says that God does not tempt. What does it mean? It literally means that when temptations come our way, there is an angel or somebody who was assigned uh, to be in that office of tempting you. It doesn't mean that you won't go through temptations, but it specifically means that it's not God himself who, tempt, who tempts us, but we go through temptations. God does not tempt us. So what is God's role in temptations? According to Jesus, the prayer, uh, and the Lord's Prayer, Jesus stated and said that do not lead us into temptations. What does it mean? It literally means that God, it actually confirms that God himself leads us into testing moment, moments and trials. God leads us towards temptations, but he doesn't tempt us. Uh, him, uh, him not being the one to tempt us doesn't mean that we shall not be tempted. But the scripture confirms that God will always lead us into temptations. Though he won't tempt us, he will lead us there. Let me give you a scripture. Uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, verses 1, uh, then, the, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. After being baptized and filled by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit instantly, immediately, led him to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. What does it mean? God leads you there, but he doesn't tempt you. He leads you to where? He leads you to the devil's territory, to that position of wrong desires. He drives you there to test you, to see whether you qualify for what he has prepared for you. So he doesn't tempt us, but he leads us into temptations. This scripture affirms it. It doesn't mean that he won't lead you there. The reason as to why, the, the reason as to why Jesus is setting it out and he says that we should pray and ask God known to lead us there, it simply confirms that he leads people there. God can lead you into the tempting class, the class of temptations, into the wilderness where the enemy is. So temptations are part of our progress and they're part of our, our maturity as we are growing in spirit. We have to go through temptations. A wilderness, yeah, a, a wilderness uh, um, is like an examination room. It is an examination, like an examination room, and the devil is like a chief examiner. You know, God is not good at tempting. He cannot bring an evil desire to you. But one of them are the needs in life that we need in order to qualify and to grow and mature in spirit. We need to be tempted. 
we need to be tested. Though God himself does not test you, I mean does not tempt you, so he will send the tempter. And now uh, that's this is where many questions are going to come across your head and you are like, oh my God, is this man tries to mean that God works with the devil at the same time? I will say yes. I will say yes. My answer will be yes. Where he needs him, you know, there are, point, there, are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are certain points in life when God needs the devil to come and act for him, to do for him something. Especially that the, the, the things that he cannot do himself. The devil is still use, useful to God. Satan is useful to God and demons use, are useful to God. We have seen them in scriptures being sent by God himself. We saw when God sent a demon uh, and he tormented Saul. It, used right to, it came and it used to torment Saul and, and it was a demon from God. You know, it may, have, it may sound like confusing for me to tell you that sometimes God has to use the devil in order to mature you. It may confuse you a lot because you are, you are actually uh, in spiritual warfare trying to cast him out. To cast him out and you, you feel like uh, he has no place in your life. But when it comes to, mature, to maturing you and training you, the devil plays that role. He's, a chief, he's the chief examiner in the wilderness. He's the chief tempter. Because I told you that you need temptations. You need to be tempted. But God himself will not tempt you. So he will call devil and he assigns him for that. He will give him a job to test you and tempt you. So in the book of Job chapter 6, the Bible says one day the angels uh, came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered and answered the Lord from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and he will surely cast you to your face. You know, here in church, we cast the devil out of our lives, out of our homes, and we don't know that he, the devil has access to God. He's actually in a conversation with God. He actually attended a meeting in heaven when the children of God came to, uh, to present themselves before God. He came among them. He wasn't in a wrong place. The devil is a child of God. Satan is a fallen angel. He's a fallen angel. And he is a son of God. He's an evil son of God. So being evil doesn't uh, destroy your birthrights. So he still claims it. He claims it and he goes back to the father. And now here he is. The devil is in heaven in God's presence. He's trying to request God to remove the hedge that he had put around Jobu's uh, Job uh wealth and family and life in order to test him. That in the conversation, God was asking him, where have you been? Have you considered my servant a job? You know, the devil can consider you. He considers us. And he also, he, he discusses us before God. He discusses us with God. He reports us to God. And we become the point of the conversation will become the point of the conversation in the conversation of both God and the devil. So, 
Satan is the chief examiner. The Lord will assign him to tempt you and to test you in order to know what is in your heart. So, according to Matthew chapter 4, we realize that the wilderness is, is their home territory for the devil and demons. There you cannot cast them. You can't. What do you do? You negotiate with them. You pass the test. And you qualify. You know, we cancel each and everything that comes our way. In the name of Jesus, we cancel them. And we don't know sometimes that we are trying to cancel the tests. We are trying to cancel and tear up uh, the, the examination papers, the question papers. We are trying to reverse the test. Some of the situations that come your way, you, there is not a prayer that you will pray to reverse them. You just have to pass them. There are examinations. You know, when the devil is assigned to come and examine you and test you, there is no a kind of prayer that you will pray for things to change. Because once he has been assigned for that, uh, for, uh, for that assignment, for the task to test you, he has also been anointed for that and mandated for that by God. That's why you pray and seek God and fast and, and things don't change. You get confused. You're like, what is, wrong? What, is, what is going on? You cast demons. They refuse to go away. They still stay there because, simply because they've been assigned and anointed to uh, test you. So when we mature in spirit, we get to understand all these mysteries. And, you know, for, for, for years, ever since I've been in church, I've, we've been told that the devil, is, a, the devil is, uh, is weak and stupid. And he's a fool. And because he's stupid, that's why we, we underestimate him. Most of us, we do underestimate the devil and the demons. But let me tell you this. There is no any examiner who is a fool? The Bible calls him a cunning creature right from the book of Genesis. He was cunning. He was wise, wiser than every creature. The Bible actually uh, uh, represents him as a, a, a serpent. What does a serpent mean? A serpent means a cunning and a wise creature. You know, every time we, um, we hear about snakes and serpents and all those kind of creeping uh, uh, creatures, we think that they are evil and what comes into our minds because ever since we were young, we've been taught and showed pictures of the devil as a snake. And we thought that snakes represent evil. But I want to teach you today and to bring you uh, to the level of understanding and maturity uh, that the devil, I mean the serpent, doesn't represent evil. The serpent represents wisdom. That's why Jesus told us to be as wise as snakes, as serpents. So uh, whenever the devil is uh, presented in a serpent form, that is not... Uh, 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 in, in that kind of a picture, it doesn't mean that it is, uh, it is being a serpent is being evil. Being serpent, a serpent literally means that you are wiser, you are cunning, you are brilliant, you know a lot of things. So whenever someone calls you a snake, he's not actually abusing you. He's actually trying to say that you are impossible. You are extra genius. You are super genius. So the devil, he's super genius. He's actually brilliant. That's why God trusts him for tests and examinations. Whenever God wants to examine you, he will assign the devil 
to set for you the paper and the number, and once you pass it, then you qualify for what you've been asking for. So he's the chief examiner. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verses 2, the Bible says that, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commands or not. It also happened to the children of Israel. The Lord, there was uh, another path for them that they could use to get to the promised land, but God made them to go through the wilderness simply because he wanted to test them. God is taking you towards that journey. God is making you to go through whatever you are going through to test you because it's not a matter of receiving what you've asked for, but it's a matter of sustaining what you are receiving from God. If we do not have the ability to sustain what God has given us, then our prayers and our answers are in vain. We are going to misuse each and everything that God has given us. God doesn't want us to misuse or to lose what he has given us. That's why he's training us. He's putting us in position which can, uh, whereby we can be able to contain, maintain, and sustain what we have received from him. So the testing moments, the examination moments are very important in our lives and it's part of our prayers. It is part of our prayers. So Jesus himself was tempted. He was. He was tested. And who tested him? The devil. Did he cast him out? No. They communicated and he challenged him. You know, the devil knows the scriptures. He knows the Bible. He knows the scriptures. When Jesus switched to the scriptures, the devil also switched to the scriptures. You know, it was written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that come, proceeds from the mouth of God. And the devil also came with the scripture. It was written. It was written. So he knows the scriptures and he works better in the temptation uh, a process of our lives. So the Lord trusts him so much concerning temptations. The Lord has never tempted you. The devil is tempting you. And the devil has been assigned and anointed for that job to tempt and also test you. Um, so our audible response in the vicinity of temptation clinches how swiftly God will respond to our urgency. Most of us, we fall short when uh, temptations come our way and finally God will fail us due to our disqualifications. Whenever we fail the tests, then we have failed to qualify. We have failed to qualify for what we are asking for. Temptations come to test our faithfulness in order to qualify for God's promises. You know, God can promise you something that he never, and it never happens. He can promise you and it never happens. God promised the children of Israel to reach the promised land and only two of them were able to make it. Why? Failure to pass the tests. Whenever you fail to pass the tests, you are disqualified. The tests and trials we go through in life matter a lot to us and to God. Whenever we pass them, then we qualify for God's promises to come to pass in our lives. So, we should understand that Satan is so much respectful. He doesn't touch what has not been permitted to him by God. The devil will never touch your home, your family, your, your business, unless he has been permitted by God during the testing moments. And he doesn't go beyond what has been assigned to him. 
He's very much principled. The devil is so much principled. We see him asking God to permit him test the job. And he was permitted to test the job. We see God leading Jesus to the wilderness. The Holy Spirit was leading him to the wilderness to be tested by the devil. And he was tested by the devil. A test is a trust. Because God trusts you, that's why he tests you. He's testing that trust he has in you. Tests are for the blameless. Whenever you appear to be blameless before God in the eyes of the devil, of the enemy, he will ask for permission to test your blamelessness. He wants to know why are you blameless. The tests are for the blameless and the upright. If, you are bl- if, you are, if there is a blame on you, if you are not trustworthy, if you are not righteous, the devil has no deal with you because he already owns you. But he's so much bothered and disturbed by the people who appear to be righteous before God. They bother him so much. So, God fearing and shunning evil, Jab was. He was God fearing and shunning evil. So, tests are known for the wicked and evil. The devil will never come to test a wicked person and an evil person because you're already wicked. Tests are known for the wicked and the backsliders. Untransformed and spiritual amateur amateurs. If you're a spiritual amateur, if you're not yet uh, grown up in the spirit, you will not be tested and tempted. Tests are for the spirit-filled and mature Christians. Tests doesn't, the test doesn't come to paralyze you, rather comes to qualify you. A test, a test reveals your true personality. A test measures your spiritual maturity. A test uh, measures your quality. Do you really qualify? A test comes to challenge your trustworthiness. It comes to test your trustworthiness and it comes to qualify you. But also one thing you should understand, as we are going through the times of tests and trials, this is part of a Christian life. Whatever you're going through is part of a Christian life. It's part of Christianity. It is part of life. It is a part of the package. It is part of the process. You know, we, we pray so much for God to take away uh, the situations that we go through in life. And we tell God, this is too much. Please come and take it away from me. This is too much. But let me tell you, when you mature in spirit and you understand what I'm teaching you right now, you get to know that uh, you need what you are going through. Because if you don't qualify, then the promises of God will never come to pass in your life. You have to qualify. You have to pass the tests. So, every test that comes your way is a reputation it is a reputation. Tests come, uh, they, they keep on repeating themselves. They're the same numbers. You know, when we are in school and we are about to do the exams, we try to read uh, through the past papers simply because we know that we try to read through the past papers simply because some of the numbers, they keep on coming back each and every Yeah. So, whatever you're going through, whatever appears to be a test, has ever been passed by someone. It is a reputation. It is possible. Someone has ever gone through the same thing you're going through and he passed it. So, a test of fire doesn't come to consume you, but it comes to refine you. It comes to refine you. It comes to change you. It comes to transform you, to make you into a new person. In the book of Psalms, chapter 66, verses 10, the Bible says, For you, O God, have tested us. 
you have refined us as silver is refined. How, how is silver refined? How is silver refined? The silver is refined by fire. So, God makes us to go through fire. He makes us to go through fire. Yes, he does. He makes us go through fire. The scripture says that you have brought us into the night. You laid afflictions on our backs. You have caused the man to ride over our heads. You have made us to go through the waters and the fires. But then, at last, you brought us to a place of abundance. That's a good thing about our good God. God is a wonderful God. He is. He brings us into the night. He lays affliction on our backs. He causes men to ride over our heads. He makes us go through the fire and the waters. And finally, he brings us out of the fire and the waters into the place of abundance. So sometimes we may try to cast things and we don't know that we are casting God himself. We try to resist, to reverse everything that happens to us, every negativity in our lives. Every bad thing that happens in our lives, we try to cast them, we try to reverse them, we try to reverse them, refuse them. We try to bind them. And then we fail. If you try to bind some, something and it fails, just know that you are binding God himself because he's an God is impossible. He is impossible. He is an impossible situation. He is an impossible guy. You cannot reverse him. You cannot bind him. You cannot challenge him. You can't challenge him. You can't. You can't challenge him. So, uh, temptations are part of our lives. Tests are part of our prayer. As we are praying, the more we pray, the more tests come our way. You know, when God hears your prayer, he prepares you for the answer. And the only way that he can prepare you for the answer is making you go through the, the tests and trials. The same applies to, applied to the children of Israel. The same applied to Jesus himself. He was tested and tried. And he never sinned. He passed all the tests. We have to pass all the tests. God wants us to pass all the tests. We have to pass them. We have to do whatever it takes to pass the tests in order to qualify for the promises of God. So tests are part of our lives. They are part of our prayer. They are part of the process. So we want to thank God so much for the tests. I usually sit there and I thank God for the tests that he has made me go through. For the shame that I've gone through. For the fails that I've gone through. I've failed many times. I've run many times, I've cried many times, I've broken down many times. God has made me break down many times. And when I sit back and I remember whatever I've gone through, I give thanks to God. Because when I grew in spirit and I matured in the spirit, I realized that everything that I went through was necessary. Was necessary. I needed them to equip me, to build me strong to mature me. So, we need tests and trials. We need uh, the devil sometimes. We need him. He is the chief examiner. He is. God himself needs the devil when it comes to tempt you and test you. He needs the devil. Let me give you a last scripture uh, to emphasize on the importance of the enemy and the demons during our testing uh, times. 
in the book of 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 20, the Bible says, And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall in at uh, Ramoth Guild? And one said on this manner, and the, another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Where, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also, go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. The Bible says Zedekiah, the son of uh, Shen, went near and nigh and smart Micaiah on the, on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? Let me tell you, a spirit came into God's meeting with the elders in heaven. They were trying to strategize of how to destroy Ahab, make him fall. And the Spirit of God could not do it. The angels of God were not in position to persuade Ahab. It required a lying spirit. A lying spirit. It appeared before God. And he asked God, that, assign me on this job. I will go as a lying spirit on the mouth of every prophet, of Ahab's prophets, and they will all persuade him to go to the battle, and he's die, he's killed there. So, God is the God of all creatures. He can command the mountains, the seas, the oceans, even the devil himself. He can assign him on a job. If it requires the devil for our lives to get better and mature and be transformed. So, I want to thank all of you who have been watching me today, and I believe that your, your life has not remained the same. I want to see your comments down here on our YouTube channel. I would request all of you uh, to subscribe with us, but also uh, you comment on something you didn't understand, and uh, I'll be able to speak about it the next time when we come here and uh, to try to clarify, uh, give more uh, more knowledge about it. I believe that our lives have not remained the same. I, I want to encourage every one of you who is going through something. You, you have to know that things happen for a reason. Sometimes it's not the devil by, by himself, but sometimes it's the devil on God's command. He's been tasked to, to test us and to challenge us and to humble us and to mature us. Uh, so it is really important to understand that. Temptations are part of our prayers. I want to thank everyone who has been uh, watching us from all over the world, those who are watching us from Canada, uh, USA, uh, South America, Asia, Africa, and Europe. May God bless you so much, and I believe that your life will not remain the same again. I want to pray over you, everyone who has been watching us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for all our people, our followers, and the friends that are watching us. Every one of them is going through something. Some of them didn't know that you are testing them, you are trying them to qualify for the promises that you have promised for them. Father, I pray that you strengthen them so that they can pass all those tests. I pray that you equip them with knowledge and understanding that can, can help them to overcome all the trials and pass them well in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness. You are an awesome God. I bless your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching us today. May God bless you so much. See you next time. In order to become a member of this class, just follow us on our YouTube channel and subscribe with us. Then you will follow every episode that you have missed. We believe your life will never be the same. May God bless you so much. Take me to the king.